Casper Kelly, who is a writer and director whose credits include the wildly popular Adult Swim short, Too Many Cooks, the Emmy-nominated series Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, the beloved Cheddar Goblin sequence in the Nicolas Cage film Mandy, alongside Final Deployment 4, Danny Ketchup, Archer, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, Squid Billies, and more. He also wrote the short story collection, More Stories About Spaceships and Cancer. He spent his puberty years living in Saudi Arabia, which probably explains something. Plus, Big Mike Geyer is a singer, actor, and entertainer based in Atlanta, Georgia. He has garnered international fame through his critically acclaimed act, Puddle's Pity Party. Geyer is well known in Atlanta uh, for his annual Elvis Presley themed Christmas show, which I don't know that he does anymore. And, uh, and also his notable charity events. He's, he's a good guy. We've talked to, uh, Casper a couple of times on this program. I don't believe we've ever spoken to Mike, but Mike used to be a guest on the radio show where I used to work and I've been to a couple of his shows. So, uh, without any further ado, please welcome Casper Kelly and Mike guy are talking about Jeff adult swim. Do you love, or is this not on HBO Max? The Fireplace. Thank you guys for uh, for joining us this evening to talk about, uh, well, is it Yule Log, Casper, or is it, uh, well, you explain. There's two names for the film. Because I, why, I like to make things extra confusing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the answer you didn't want that's longer and not entertaining but i'll make it very short and make it very entertaining we wanted to fake people out so adult swim eulog was the right title but i guess vainly i thought oh maybe 10 years from now if there's a film festival and they have they're playing all the movies i've made because hopefully i'll make 10 uh <laughs> is it seemed weird that one of them is called adult swim eulog so i thought maybe you should there's a fake title and then there's the real title, but it ended up being very confusing. I should have just embraced the fake title. <laughs> Lesson learned. Well, listen, we were talking before a little while ago before you guys joined us that imagine somebody's 80 years old and, and they're looking through the TV and they, oh, your log. I love that when I was younger. And then they start the movie when <laughs> they're captivated. That's the punishment they get for not seeing the rating. That's right. <laughs> they're okay for about two minutes and then. Yeah, shit just goes sideways. I was going to put Mike in the movie somewhere, but then he had the audacity to be on a amazingly fun uh, tour cruise <laughs> in Spain for a month. Then I knew I had to put a, a do a song with him, which was super fun. Because <laughs> I'm not musical at all, but this gives me the a moment of feeling like I'm musical. If I write lyrics and then they have to figure out a way to make it work. I don't know if you see my background, but that is a picture that I took in 2011 at one of your shows. I was just doing like writing for this local e-zine or whatever, and they would send me to stuff. And I had no idea who you were, none of that. And when, when I got to the show, I was blown away. It was oh, like right. unbelievable. I'm it is definitely like Broadway level. Yes. Wow. And I, I raved about you ever since. I'm like, if you have a chance, you got to see this show. Thank you so much. Those were so much fun. Are Casper, you ever going to do them again? I don't know. The clown's keeping me pretty busy. <laughs> so as wow. soon as I get some time off to do a thing, the clown comes along and say, hey, this thing came up. <laughs> we got to go. And the name of that That's clown it. is? Puddles. That's Puddles right. Pity Party. It's such an enjoyable uh, anything. You see Puddles on TV. You see Puddles on Instagram doing videos. Uh, it's you just stop and watch and listen and enjoy. I mean, it's 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 great. And uh, oh, thanks. I'm not. I'm you know. I'm I'm hyperbolic to a degree, but I'm not being hyperbolic right now. Usually, I just end up running into you at uh, Corner Cup and Tucker. But it's you know, uh, I would rather see uh, see uh, one of your shows again. I love the Christmas show. I love the Elvis show. Uh, there was that something you did every a couple of years in a row on Elvis's birthday, or was that just a one off? I know I went to one of that. Them. Almost twenty years. Wow. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Almost twenty. Yeah. Well, no, actually. Uh... Probably more than 20 years. Dang. January yeah. and August, yeah. And the ooh la Valentine's Day show. It is. Oh, that was with the Dames to Flame. Yeah. 
You used to come on oh, right. Enough about you, Casper. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm happy to talk about. It. I'm gonna. I I met Big Mike at uh, uh, Trader Vic's here in Atlanta. It was in a tiki bar band, and then he did. The whole night was just magical. Uh, my ties and and Big Mike. This is before puddles, and then when he did a rendition of uh, "More Than a Feeling," it gave me more than a feeling. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> I was going to ask how you guys I mean, met. Oh my god! I mean, he just like I think I developed a crush on you at that point. <laughs> I think Mike did stuff with the tour for Aqua Teen Hunger Force, didn't he? When you guys did that live tour, puddles did, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, did uh, yeah some uh, a show uh, in New Orleans and Philly and New York City. In fact, the more than a feeling bit was that was Sean Coleman's idea. Oh, was it? Yeah, he uh, wrote the and song and wrote "Too Many Cooks." That's right, Sean. I fact, uh, Sean. We, it was a band called Tongo It was. That's right. Sean Coleman, Chris Dale, uh, myself, and uh, oh, there was a guitar player. You know, and Amy Pike used to be in that band as well. It was quite a wild band how it started at trader vicks we there was they didn't have live music there and we said hey you should have live music here so we did that and we had a standing gig there had a standing gig there for uh, 14 15 years it was pretty wild and we had a, we used to have a, ga a gag where we could say we could play eight bars of any song or 16 bars of any <laughs> song or 32 bars of any song and then we would just look it up on the phone <laughs> way, way through it. To do your song in the film was it something that you knew what you were singing about or was it just the idea of the movie everything was a secret i just had the lyrics and a look that i would <laughs> And really, you know, it's really under the uh, the direction of Sean Coleman. He really was giving giving us most of the direction for how to go with it, which is it's kind of funny singing a doing a song about something and you don't know what it's about. You don't know anything about it <clears throat> other than I think it was the working title. That was it. I don't think much was much else was revealed. So when they told you this flaming log is just going to kill everybody in this cabin, <laughs> I, they didn't. I didn't know that much. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was really a mysterious process, very secretive. I'm not sure that was on purpose. I probably would have told you anything you wanted. Uh, <laughs> I just didn't think of it. I didn't want to press. I sort of liked the mystery of it all, of how is this going to pan out. It was quite a mystery, and it's a really weird song. It's really it is. Yeah. Besides subject matter, even musically, it's a weird song. Yeah. Sean Sean Coleman wrote the, the music, right? He did. And yes. it has all of these. It's you know, there's a lot of I don't know if they're intentional references, but within the music itself, there's this I don't know, it's got this I kept think hearing the Scott Walker kind of Oh, this weird Scott Walker, da da, not da da, but it just would take all these mysterious turns musically through it, and so it was, uh, it was quite a challenge. What a Mike, uh, people don't bring him up very often. Sorry, Ken. well, a friend, yeah. a friend just texted me, raising a raving about the song today, and said this Scott Walker ass shit is so great. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's great you put it on spotify and i'm like it is on spotify <laughs> yeah oh the yeah Scott i was going to mention that the you, you released a song as a single on spotify th that came out this week yeah so you can stream it if you want to hear what we're talking about yeah i think it may be nightmare inducing for some <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't mean to okay. tell you your business casper but i really felt like you you missed an opportunity having Mike do like a love song to score the pimento cheese scene when she was feeding him Ooh, the cheese. Yes. <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> yeah. I, now, have you seen right. um, Barbarian? Yes. Yes, I did. When after we had shot this, and yes. And did I see <laughs> the similarities? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not, not just the uh, Airbnb. <laughs> They both have a Airbnb double booking thing, but mm -hmm. also both characters are named Mother. They both have a character named Mother, 
Like, uh, yeah. It's in the ether. It's like when uh, <laughs> those two meteor movies came out, you know, right? The film itself had a lot of surprises, and that's why you got to you, you watch it and you sit down. And the thing I like best is lately these days for a movie is to have no expectations. I don't read reviews. I If it's something I want to see, I just wait and I watch it. I don't look for social media reactions. Sometimes I even mute it in my Twitter feed so I don't say anything about it. And I love how Adult Swim has been doing that with a lot of the content. They did it with uh, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, the Aqua Teen shorts that were on YouTube, which were great and they weren't spoiled, the Aqua Teen movie, and now Yule Log. I mean, again, I okay, it's a Yule Log movie. And when it started, I had no idea. So, so it's just going to be this fire for two hours. That's fine. I'll watch it. <laughs> but twists and turns and, and an awesome rug pull at the end, which I thought, oh, this is kind of, oh. <laughs> uh and then the song kicks in so from start to finish it, it's captivating and it looks great and and obviously you shot it around here right in atlanta indicator we found a house that looks like a mountain cabin because we could not afford to put a crew up in blue ridge yeah what i had in mind <laughs> But you can buy lakefront property up there for only $495. <laughs> you know, I heard, I don't know if this is true, but I heard the the Duplass brothers, when they do movies and they shoot at a location, they'll buy the location if they can as part of the production. But this might be a total lie, but, and then they, then they own it. Yeah. And I was like, it's a pretty smart strategy. I did not do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, and let's not forget the the cast of the of the of the film. The, the, a very good cast, good acting, um, and and really nailed the parts and, and the scares and stuff like that. And these are all people from Atlanta. Uh, yeah, or people from Atlanta are willing to work local. I think like uh, Brendan, who uh, played Pleatherface, lives in New York, but uh, yeah, he was down to come down. Yeah. Yeah, we got a deep bench of talent here. It's just a fun, co creative community. Like, you know, just uh, I got to go to uh, uh, Mike's studio in Avondale, and I'm just like, oh, I love this feeling here, you know. I'm, I'm talking about this because I'm angling for him to let me uh, work there, have a little office yeah. in the corner. <laughs> yeah, we're going to build an empire I'm drop, there. I'm trying to drop hints. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, the acting... I'm pretty, I have pretty low self-esteem, but I think I'm pretty good at casting. I do. I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think you are. I, I'm picturing you like just one night you're having a drink and staring into the fire and you're thinking, I don't wonder how much, what it would be like if that log was traumatized, like deeply <laughs> traumatized. <laughs> I mean, like, how did you close. come up with this idea? Well, yeah, what it was, was looking at a fire log video and then uh, imagining sort of slightly out of focus legs walking by and dialogue off screen. And that just excited me, you know, trying to tell a story uh, that, and originally I was going to try to do it all on a tight shot on the fire, but I quickly uh, realized that there's a certain, sort of like too many cooks. It's a certain length to do that. And then you should try something else, you know, <laughs> keep well, the, reeling uh... the audience in if you can. The um the timeline uh, changes on screen were ingenious as far as making the black and white and you know the different areas going back and forth. That was uh that was very original. I was I was I thought that was a very cool format to use given the restrictive area that you had to use. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was really a function of well, if the camera's locked off, what can I do? Oh, I can travel in time. Uh, it was kind of scary because, uh, yeah, it kind of led to led to some directions that surprised me. But we're definitely on my mind as a Southerner, you know. Uh, my dad's from Georgia, my mom's from North Carolina, so I it just came out of me <laughs> some of that stuff out that way. Yeah, um, it was on my mind. Yeah, how, it's on. I guess it's it's part of it's on America's mind as it should be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ahead, Do you want to talk about some of the Easter eggs? I know William Tarkovsky, who has been on this podcast before, had, a, had yes. an appearance. He's in there. Another one is the um, brand of pimento cheese is 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 as legally close to the brand of cheddar goblin macaroni and cheese <laughs> as possible. I like to think they're in the same universe somehow. 
So uh, those. And are... you mentioned your pre- your pretty face in the, in the yeah dialogue. Did I at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! I didn't even occur to me. Holy <laughs> cow! That must have been just unconscious. You're absolutely holy cow! I didn't. I even thought it was me. intentional because I yeah. heard it like, oh yeah, nice product placement. It is. It was intentional. I oh. was. I, I was not surprised at all. That was totally planned. How many wow, people? that's cool. But I, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did work very intuitively and in just using stuff unconsciously. So that stuff can come up because it's on your mind, you know. But wow, I didn't even think of that. Holy cow! Thank you, Jeff, for that. <laughs> How uh, how do you, how did you uh, decide to put the little man in the fire saying the thing about the uh, this is this is fine meme? I found that to be amazing because I've <laughs> I seen that, that meme part. For years. Wasn't that great? It was great. I think that I just thought, well, he's there against fire at a table. I just thought of that meme, and I'm like, well, maybe he should. Maybe we'll hang a hat on it. <laughs> yeah, Mike, is Puddles going to be out on the road next year? Or, or doing anything new next year you can talk about? Or he uh, mid, Mid-January, we go out to uh, Seattle and Portland. Uh, uh, we're doing Sketch Fest in San Francisco with the great Dave Hill and Steve Agee. Oh, oh wow. wow. Nice. A little combined show called Play Date. Nice. Uh, with special appearance by uh, Eric Idle. Wow. Oh, oh my wow. God. We're conspiring together. Um, Puddles is w- currently working on a couple of tunes with Eric, uh, but they're, it's just the very beginning stages. So hopefully uh, that'll be some recording going on in January out West with him, with Eric on these ridiculous, absurd, they're really stupid songs. That's great. <laughs> I mean, they're wildly <laughs> stupid. But after watching Ulog, I'm like, oh, shit, you can make anything. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> So don't Puddles is that. working with a python. Is that yes. what you're telling me? Puddles is working with a python. Wow. Living the era now where comedy, you know, we've heard for the last couple of years from s- sour people, like, well, how can comedy be fun if it's not mean? It can be absurd or it could be something that you haven't completely thought about, which is making it better, you know, for us old farts who grew up mm-hmm. watching all these people that, you know, may have been mean or whatever. My My overall point is, is that, there's still really great stuff out there and it's coming out of the, the, you know, entertainment, music, comedy coming out of the, out of the minds of guys like yourself. The only thing that makes me mad about Yule Log is they didn't come out 25 years ago when I was still doing acid. <laughs> don't need it though. That's the thing. I agree with you to it to a degree, but you don't need acid for this. Oh, but come on. That, oh, what, a, what an acid movie though. Oh my God. When that log is screaming and it's like that, the lady, the slave's voice and she's screaming, she's killing the one guy. I couldn't do that. And then the alien <laughs> comes in. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, the alien. Spoiler. With the spoiler. dickheads. Yeah. <laughs> now that, oh, that was great. Now was that Ooh. Shane Morton as well? Yes. Shane Morton. Yes. Yeah. We the sat. Fall, former uh, podcast guest Shane Morton. Yes. He's, he's, sat at his table and i was kind of yeah we were just adding to it and like yeah maybe he's got these sort of tongue-like tendrils that <laughs> stick out when he's excited yeah we're like yeah oh they were tongue-like <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> there are another thing <laughs> other things too um appendage like oh quasi related not related but i want to talk about sketch fest i got to go they had a your pretty face panel right before COVID hit it was our last trip if you guys can ever go to that or any listeners, that is one of the best things to go to. Uh, it has just got a murderer's row of comedians, sketch movies. Like I saw airplane with the directors and the actors, or, wow. you know, a screening of that. I saw kids in the hall. I, I mean, it's just insane. It's great. It uh, is a- it's in San Francisco, you know, Great leave. festival. It takes place over the course of a few weekends too, so you don't have to go to the whole the whole thing. But uh, Puddles is doing a Paul Tompkins thing, a big musical uh, production there, and a couple of other things too. So it, there's going to be there's lots of stuff all over town. And we had Janet Varney on the podcast in the past. Oh. She, she's a, she was a, one of the founders, I think, of Sketch. Fest. This is the her the play date. The Puddles play date is was sort of her uh, her idea. Yeah. So um, Puddles has been trying to do Sketchfest for a few years, and then 2020 kind of screwed that up. So this is the first time we've been able to uh, get it together. 
get out there. Yeah, it's nice that things are are semi back to normal or mostly back to normal, or at least people are like, well, I don't care. I'm going to go anyway <laughs> and roll the Yeah, it's, it's pretty there. Everybody's had COVID already. I've had it twice. No. I'm having it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the side of RSV. In fact, uh, COVID should be here. We're having supper together. <laughs> hey guys, Stephanie, I haven't seen you in forever. It's good to see you. It's Jeff, so good I to see you. you. All the time. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm always available. So, okay. I'm especially to be killed by a log or anything that you have. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be glad to be murdered. Yeah, I want you all to be victims in in the next. <laughs> <laughs> i would love to be a victim of anything is you know as long as i get a credit and i can go ahead <laughs> just for the longest time my only credit on imdb and it's gone no it's still there is stool grease which is one of the worst things i've ever done in my life but i got 50 bucks so pretty <laughs> is that the name of your character or the show no i was uh, a baby that talked like this and smoked cigars i think dave willis said to me one time yeah i saw that uh, Tim, that was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the Squidbillies credit too, though, don't you? Yeah, not on IMDb. I think I have to do it myself. So you can't just... scrub IMDb either. You can't scrub yeah. it once it's on there; it's forever. Yeah. Really, it's almost impossible to have things taken <clears throat> off. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like a skin tag. Well, no, you can actually. Get the... <laughs> so careful what you say yes to. Yeah. Well, that's true. But I like money. Um, well, I mean, just uh, I, I do this thing where I, I go on the radio on our radio show and I'll say I'll record a personal greeting as a gift. So it's sort of like a cameo, but I'm not on Ooh, video. It's, it's a Timio. Called. It's a Timio. <laughs> and and uh, so I've done a bunch of those. And it's like Paul Stanley and other people. And uh, a guy asked me to do Shelby foot video. So I recreated an, a cut scene from uh, the uh, the the Ken Burns documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't want anybody uh, to see it, but the guy. <laughs> do, your, do your Shelby foot. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Play it on me. Back in, in uh, Gettysburg, uh, <laughs> in, uh, uh, Chamberlain was up on top of a little round top, and, and uh, you know, and Jeb Stewart was late, and uh, General Lee said, well, if I don't get you know, Jim here, then those people are going to win. And uh, those people he was talking about, uh, talking about, of course, the Yankees. And and, 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 oh, and then one time, uh, I believe Abe Lincoln sent a, a telegram to, or whatever, I don't know what the hell they had, <laughs> to, uh, to General McClellan and said, if, uh, if you're not busy with the army, do you mind if I borrow it for a while? And <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, Leo. Thank you. I only do people that aren't relevant anymore, but I don't how do, you, how do you make bread, a bread recipe or something like that? Well, first you take the flour and you add a little water to it and maybe some lard. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do my Eddie money next. Everybody I do is gone, but it's okay. Gentlemen, thank you Let's very much. Angelo Battle of Mente. No, too soon. Who? <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Too soon. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, did you see uh, David Lynch's video yesterday? Yeah. No weather report today. I loved it. His his stuff is... Today's number is six. <laughs> Guys, thank you for coming on. Yes. Let's stay in thank touch. You. I'd love to see Thanks. you. Oh, you know, Puddles is doing that uh, REM tribute tomorrow. I'm going to be there. You are? I am. He's going to I'll be do back a... in the cheap seats. He's doing it. Uh, Black Crows are uh, hosting it. It's the what, 40th anniversary of Chronic Town. Uh, so yeah, Paul's is going to do a song, not nice. an REM, not an REM song. He's going to do somebody else's song. Pylon. Let's you know, do a pylon song. That's yeah. yeah. Thanks for having awesome. me, you guys. Yeah, thank you guys. Our pleasure, man. Thank you for letting yeah. me. Come you back anytime. You. Yeah, so, it was so yeah, sure. such a love, love you both, you guys, and so yeah. our big Mike. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, such a fan. So please, and, please and, and Stephanie with a log sometime <laughs> soon. Please, please, Casper. That's all I'm asking. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye, Happy guys. guys. Happy holidays. Doodles. Uh, uh they're very entertaining.
um, and a really nice guy. So, you know, if you see anything that either of them are doing, support it, please. And if you're not familiar with Puddles, go out and look for Puddles right now. Yeah, Puddles just got off a tour with Piff the Magic Dragon. I, I know. Wish I, I wish they would have come here. I don't, I don't think they played here. So next week will be, uh, before we come back after the break here, I uh, just want to let everybody know that uh, next week will be our last show of 2022. It'll be uh, They Died. We're going to do an in memoriam uh, to, uh, you know, all the people that we lost in, in our realm uh, in 2022. We'll also talk about our, our favorite movies and TV shows, podcasts, and all the like from 2022. So make sure that you don't miss that one. Uh, before we go to break, though, Steph. Oh, uh, yeah. Barkville this uh, Sunday at PetSmart in Alpharetta, North Point Parkway in the afternoon. But yeah, from 12 to 3 and at 3 o'clock, uh, 2.30, something like that, they're going to announce the winner live. Um, I think they're going to Facebook live it or whatever. So if you guys... You can still buy tickets up, up till Saturday night? I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can, I mean, if you're here in the Saturday morning, you still got time today to go to barkville.charityraffles.org and buy a ticket uh they're 20 bucks and it's not just the grand prize you can win there's lots of you know lower tier prizes that you can win for the 20 bucks and it'll really be helping us out big time so if you can do that we appreciate it if you already have thank you so much and good luck and woof wags to riches keep it canine Keep it canine, yes. Yeah, keep it canine. Happy holidays. I'd like to, this is Paul Stanley, by the way, making a guest appearance from the Von Hessler Doctrine on the Radio Labyrinth podcast. And I'm very charitable this year, so I'm only charging you 200 bucks. Um, okay, so thanks to Atlanta Pizza in Euro, who is the longtime sponsor of Radio Labyrinth. And thank you to Mike Hall and everybody who works at the restaurant. AP&G has been undergoing some remodeling, and they're adding new floors and a bar top area with 10 additional beer taps. And they will have 16 beers on tap, which is going to happen very, very soon. Plus, they're expanding their local craft beer, which is also on tap, and are excited for the holiday season and the coming new year. If you're a business or a corporate client who's looking to book a food truck for your next private event or catered luncheon, Please contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza in Euro by calling 770-483-6228. A, P, and G loves serving their local community of Conyers, Covington, and the East Metro area. And I would like to thank all of the Atlanta area and like to thank everybody for the continued support and business throughout the years. Can you get Folgers there? Maybe. You know, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. <laughs> I mean, that's after rolling over and seeing a blonde with natural 32 double Ds. But that's a different story. Uh, they're <laughs> open for dining and takeout. Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday 12 to 9. Closed on Sunday, the Lord's Day. If you're a Christian, my Lord's Day is Saturday because I'm not a Christian. So don't talk to me until sunup. I don't know how it works. <laughs> hey, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? I do. I need a giant kiss banner. Sure. Just like me, you might. Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens in Greece? No, in Athens, Georgia, since 2005, with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706 316 9366. Or email them at athens at ldiline.com. Maybe they can make me another ear. <laughs> so, just a couple of things going on. Um, well, first of all, uh, Steph, what are you and Neil doing for the holidays? What are we doing? Yeah, are you going out of town or you already got that under your belt? Oh, no, we're staying here. Staying yeah, here. no, that's the going out of town is done. The wiping Thanksgiving the, was enough. Wiping out the public's bakery and just staying oh home. God. Dude, those cakes. Their those cakes, cakes are pretty damn good. I'm telling you right now, people, 
don't sleep on the Publix banana pudding cheesecake. Banana pudding cheesecake. Do they make it there? Or is it shit? Oh, there? yeah. No, no. All of them are. Right. They have like all these different cheesecakes. I ordered all of our uh, Christmas party stuff for work for Tuesday. So I got another one because people were just went so freaking bananas over it. <laughs> and uh -huh. I got a uh, red velvet cheesecake and then I got um, a tropical cheesecake and some strawberry almond cake and then like a Hanukkah cake because we got I want that chocolate ganache cake dude yeah. that chocolate ganache cake and you know I had a couple they were like I don't like it it's a little too sweet little chocolate or whatever and I'm like just try it and they're like oh my god it's so light because it's just a very thin layer of chocolate ganache over mm. top of whipped cream then vanilla cake and then whipped yeah. cream in the middle it is <laughs> so freaking good it sounds delicious it is really good i mean i got it as a half sheet cake for the office but you can just get like a little round one it's like 20 bucks at kroger now you have to make your own cake kroger can go to hell their bakery sucks <laughs> everything at kroger is help yourself Don't yeah. well, but... and, and their cakes are nasty they, yeah, they use all that kroger's are bad they, uh, they... it depends on where you go if you go to a, a re refurbished kroger where they have everything like you know open air they don't make make subs at kroger anymore though. oh they don't but they never did no they did yeah they did the one across from us when we lived at river parkway made subs all the time oh i would never eat a, a kroger sub pub they sub. were good really they were good. Yeah. yeah they used boar's head meat and all that jazz oh, they were i know they were good sushi because kroger has the best sushi yeah they do <laughs> Yeah, they, they get do. As far as, as, far as non sushi places go, Kroger sushi is not bad. Oh, really? I was being facetious. I like uh, the big Mediterranean like olive bar. They do have that is good. That is good. Their olive bar is pretty, pretty darn good. And their bakery isn't so bad either for like breads and stuff. But breads you can't, and stuff, sure. You can't top White Mountain bread, uh, which Publix. Is, when Jeff and I lived together, he would buy white mountain bread and I would make like six sandwiches in one day and he'd come home from work and there'd be no bread left. Yeah, I left you the heel. Or <laughs> <laughs> bitched about the heel. If you just melt a piece of cheese on the heel, yeah. you, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I grew, if you I grew up when yourself and your roommate ate it all. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or your parents would just give you the heels anyway. They would just flip them over. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You'd be like, you'd be trick. halfway through your sandwich and you'd be like, son of a bitch. Or but check it out. If you, if you butter the heels, both heels, and then you use them to make a grilled cheese, it comes out like even better, I think. But there was always a lie that, uh, you know, people, your parents would tell you, your grandparents, well, all the nutrients are in the crust. <laughs> and they tell you so much. I still think that. Or like you're eating a baked potato and you don't want the peel. Well, that's where all the nutrients are in the peel. But that is true, though. Is it? Yeah. With potatoes. There's a lot of there's a lot of minerals and nutrients in that in that skin that there is not. I mean, the potato itself is not nutritious at all. Potatoes are some, terrible for you. Right. Huh? Isn't there some nutrition in a potato? Not starch. really. It's just pure starch. So damn good. Yeah, that's why. Baked potatoes. They're not nutritious. Oh well, I'm gonna keep eating them, and then I'll if eat you, the skin. If you make a baked potato, always eat. Yeah, the skin. put the skin in it. I do. I make. I, I put a, a, a pig skin on top of it. I love it. <laughs> you know, you make a baked potato. You you I, I uh, poke it with the fork, and then I uh, coat it in olive oil, and then I put a whole bunch of um, of uh, kosher salt on it. And then I bake it. That's really good. That's Do you salt. ever get one of those mongoloid baked potatoes for that's like the size of a, a Volkswagen Beetle? Yeah. They're good. I love potato. I'll it just, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it's too, I mean, and that's something for me to say that a uh, food is too big. Cause like, there's no food too big for me, but that's a, that <laughs> potato is, it's kind of ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Here's a mistake I made last Friday night. I thought, oh, I'm going to get all clever and buy some beef tallow. And cooked the potatoes in it. And it was disgusting. Because <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah. It was like gross-ass beef fat taste permeating the potato. And I thought, oh, this is healthier than, you know, you no, it's not. You're going to roast potatoes in the oven, use olive oil. And uh, that's that. As soon as you start with the word beef, healthy goes out the window. <laughs> no, you're, just, you're done. Beef Joe is Rogan not healthy. He could, Joe Rogan cooks his vegetables with beef tallow. Does he? I don't know. Well, he and works you, out if, like seven hours a day, so it doesn't matter. Right. 
<laughs> well, if you'd, if you'd have like done home fries or something in the tallow, that would have tasted a lot better than permeating yeah, yeah. the baked potato. Yeah. Or just make French fries. McDonald's used to cook their French fries in beef tallow. Mm -hmm. and you should do like a tallow poutine. A tallow poutine. You know what would be better? Duck fat. Duck fat tastes better than beef fat. You like duck fat? Yes. No. You don't know if you like. Hey, Beardy. It's the first time I'm seeing you. Look at that! But you got it on. You got it on grid view. Yeah, now I do. But look at you. Look at that beard. You haven't grown a beard that long, and haven't forever. It's good. It looks great. Yeah, he looks like a therapist. Yes. Now, if you guys have intent of doing the White Lotus recap, um, you're just gonna spoil it for me. But that's okay. I don't care. The end was great. I know who died thanks to uh, somebody who sent me a Facebook message. Aw, that sucks. That was like the best. Part yeah, about that was the biggest biggest surprise of the whole thing. I and, uh, really did not think it was going to be her. I said thanks for uh, spoiling it. Oh, <sighs> sorry, man. I should have asked. Yeah, he pulled a Jeff on you. Well, Jeff wouldn't intentionally do it. No, Jeff the never wife. does. He never the intentionally it. does it. Yeah, the wife did it. Fuck you. <laughs> I thought for sure it was going to be the Japanese dude was going to go crazy. And he was going to kill that dude and then kill Aubrey yeah, well, Plaza. They, those two just needed to fuck already. Well, mm. I guess apparently, to me, I felt like it was going to, they set it up as like a, they're going to be like the other couple. That was just yeah. like the starter package of it. Hmm. Well, damn it all the heck. Well, as much as like they thought they were so above them. And what's with Mike, Mike White making the gays the bad guys? That was, that was pretty funny. And then the, she's trying to tell the boat pilot, yeah. the boat captain, these gays, they're trying to kill me. And the, the, the boat captain goes, I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> gay. Gay people aren't allowed to be the bad guy. Ever. I don't know. It's just weird that Mike White, as a gay man, would vilify all those gay men, make oh, yeah. them the bad guys. Oh, I think that normalizes them. So I think yeah, that's probably why he did that it. Gives them, yeah, it gives them something other than the the pedestal they're put on yeah, yeah gay mm. people suck too i th I like that he's <laughs> that he you know he's like people are people so why should it be i just thought i i mean i'm not gonna spoil it for you tim but i just i thought that what it was leading up to was that they were going to blackmail her mm -hmm. and that was it yeah that's what i thought too i thought they were going to videotape her getting it yeah. on with that, and with that dude her. and then that would violate her prenup somehow if she was unfaithful and then he would get all the money uncle rico would get all the money i didn't think they were trying to take her out i did watch that smile movie oh my god i didn't watch that that looks too creepy for me it's a trip it's Isn't very it? different i like their marketing campaign it was pretty yeah. cool they had people behind like home plate yeah. and baseball games doing it and stuff. <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I was I, thinking, oh God, how scary could it be? A bunch of people smiling, but then when yeah. you see the movie, you're like, oh shit. The, I've uh, seen the short film; it's pretty good. I haven't seen the movie yet, though. Did you guys watch Troll? Yeah, I watched. Yeah, it. I watched it a couple weeks ago. It was, it was the best Godzilla movie I've seen all year. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> the best Godzilla with a nose and a beard who looks like a giant. <laughs> I watched some of it. I mean, he looked good, but the movie overall, it kind of it got too and mushy and. Too much about the family and whatnot. Their other movies are really good. They did one called The Wave and then one called Quake. And uh both kind of like Norwegian Jerry Brockheimer movies. <laughs> Transformers. Um, yeah. Transformers. But, but I mean, really, I mean, really good. I mean, for a you know, that's kind of like the pride of Norway as far as their films go. And I mean, like Dark coming out of Germany and Dude. I mean they make some good stuff. He do it everything. So you guys, um, have all watched these guys, by the way, have all watched uh White Lotus and we were talking about it a little bit. I guess you probably heard that, but I um haven't seen it all yet. We're gonna probably get caught up on it. But we're so busy. Um Caitlin and Gil are flying up to Boston tomorrow and I'll be driving up shortly thereafter and then driving back. So we uh we have a busy You're on the no fly list now. Yeah, I can't fly. No, I have to work <laughs> at, the, uh, at the end of the week. But the cool thing is, is that he's being christened, and I'm excited because it might be in Latin, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, 
is he? What are you? What are you guys? Episcopalian? No, we're uh, Catholics, which means we go to church once a year, <laughs> and uh, we uh, no, it's Catholic church. It's a, it's Caitlin's mom's church and the church that Caitlin grew up in. So that's pretty cool, I think. And her um her sister and brother in law were going to be the uh, godparents. Oh, that is good. So now Gil can just do whatever he wants and confess, and it's all good. Yeah, he wants. Like he needs to, he needs to murder somebody real quick before he gets to the <laughs> oh, gets right. get one under his then. belt before he gets out. <laughs> yeah, there. then all, yeah. all of that's forgiven once he's baptized. Well, no, if he if something happened anyway, this is too dark. <laughs> <laughs> dark, too dark, too dark. And I'm just gonna go into Chris Collins' order and talk about how terrible the Giants look this week, Jeff. And I just don't know what to say. The Lions are coming back with a vengeance, and that's just what's going to happen. Jared Goff being Jared Goff and beating up on Minnesota. They're the talk of the town, man. Talk of the town. I like and I have got the Jets. I mean, it's really good. A very good chance of beating the Jets. Maybe the Jets have a good defense, and Minnesota does not. We have momentum, Tim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. Hey, the Stop. Lions look good, man. The Lions look really good. They're a rookie wide receiver who hasn't played since – a bowl game last year and he played and got a, I think he got a touchdown. Right. Look, they're playing with no ego. Yeah. Playing as a team, as a unit. Yeah. Suck my unit. Like a big fat unit. Big fat Detroit unit. Here's they, the ru they ruined the giants. See, this, <laughs> oh. is, this is the guy right here though, baby. Josh yeah. Allen. Josh Allen. It was a close game though. You have to give it up. That was a very good game. That was one of the best games of the season. I gotta say they kept it very, very close. This week I'm starting Saquon. I gotta go with my studs. <laughs> it's yours truly here, OJ Simpson. It's horrible. <laughs> views, views. Or 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 it's news. Uh, this week, National Treasure: Edge of History on Disney Plus. Nicholas Cage is not part of it, but it's it's a series based on the movie. I might give it a view just to see if it's any good, but I I only like the first movie, so that's it for me. Yeah, I, I thought I'd views it. <laughs> Who killed Santa? A Murderville mystery on Netflix. Wait a minute. Yeah, what, I want to watch that. What did Steph say? <laughs> 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 this is the Will Arnett series. They're doing a Christmas special. Looks like Jason Bateman's going to be in it. I don't, I don't know who else. When is it? It's, it's out, out now, I think, or hmm. it comes out this week. That's something I might view. I yeah, think the fifteenth, right? Yeah, 15th. yeah, sure. Uh, so it's a view for me. And then uh, 1923, the uh, second Yellowstone spinoff starts this week. I think it's on Paramount Plus. Steph, it won't have that weird looking woman in it. Maybe you might watch. I'll try that because I like the I like the eighteen whatever the one with Sam Elliott. I love that one. You got that one. I like rattlesnake, 18, you dumbass. Eighteen eighty three. You're going yeah. to die. <laughs> I'll probably watch it because I I would watch Yellowstone if it was not for her. Man, why don't you just you know what they need an AI filter so you could put any actor in that you to cover up people you don't like. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I would, sure I would, I would, yeah, I would probably, I don't know who I would put in her place. Put Anna just somebody... Gunn in there. Oh, Anna no, Gunn. that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch 1923. Yeah, it's a for me. Chewy, Chewy. Oh, wait a minute. You're Ellen Mirren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love that 18, whatever, 1886, whatever. I don't know. But I don't like Yellowstone. I haven't I don't either. Ever. I I've never it. seen it. I, I, I liked 1883, and I'm going to watch 1923, but I don't like Yellowstone that much. You don't like Kevin Costner ever since. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Costner's all right, but just the, the whole show, it's done appeal to me. How come you didn't have Dances with Smurfs 2 on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to see that, by the way. Maybe when it comes out on video. I didn't like Avatar, the first one, very much. And who else is going to watch the, uh, the Share Christmas special with Red Fox? On YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, I highly recommend. I can't recommend that enough. First That's... of all, you get to look at mid seventies share in her belly, um, and that ain't bad, right, Steph? Sorry, got to get... gypsies, tramps, and thieves. Hey, that song you can't sing anymore. 
Because <laughs> of gypsies or because yeah, of the gypsies tramps? is a word you're not supposed to say. Well, tramps don't like it either. But they don't <laughs> on the internet. Are there tramps anymore? I mean, They're it's stamped. just a different quit word being, for a bomb. Quit being racist against thieves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thieves deserve <laughs> the recommended thieves. Uh, thieves are very treated poorly. That's true. You just reminded me when my when we did my boss's fiftieth birthday yesterday. The girl who put all the decorations up, she had a sign that said "Old Lives Matter." All. Old lives old, matter. Old, yes, uh, and my we were all a little bit terrified, but because she's like Afghani and she has you know biracial children, so we felt like she could get away with it. But none of us would have put "Old Lives Matter" up. We just wouldn't have done it. Oh, so you don't want that hurt? That hat I got you for Christmas. <laughs> just throw it away when it shows up. I got I got Neil a MAGA hat and I got you an All Lives Matter hat. <laughs> oh, you need to give me the DeSantis Airlines T-shirt. But what are you watching? Watching here. What are you watching? Okay, so what are we watching? <laughs> what are we watching? We watch. I did watch Pinocchio. Did you guys watch that? No, I didn't no. watch that one yet. All right, Dustin, did you? Not yet. No. I have to say, without spoiling it, that it was a lot of fun. I have to say. I really, really liked it. I had no idea what to expect. And I liked that there's no Jiminy Cricket in it. Uh, um, and it's just, it's great. I have to say, it's really, really great. Ewan McGregor is is uh, Sebastian the Cricket. And uh, guy, what's his name? The guy who played uh, Walter Frey and uh, Filch. Yeah, David Bradley. He was he's he's a, a Geppetto. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and there's lots of good uh, casting in that in that. So and Christoph Waltz is in it. Um, so check it out if you haven't seen it. That was one of our uh, snooze reviews from last week. Anything else in there? I don't really think. Uh, no, I I've, I've snoozed all all three from last week. Well, what, Harry, were, what were the three? Okay, tell her, Jeff. Last week was uh, Pinocchio, Emancipation, and Harry and Meghan. Oh yeah, none of them. <laughs> None of them. Zip. People are talking about that Harry and Meghan though. Lots of people are watching it. Yeah. Oh my God, Tim oh. Dillon! He just he did such a great. Oh, he, so tell me that today. Wow, it was so funny. Oh, my, he just talked about like how he respects her. She played the long game. You know, she she saw that this somewhat autistic prince was just out here waiting to get snapped. And, you know, she got the $100 million from Netflix. She took him away from the family and got that. And he was like, but, you know, they're a blood cult. And she got him out of the blood cult. And then he was talking about how the queen, you know, she only ate like one fried baby a day, just the legs. <laughs> You'd have them for breakfast. Yeah, too fatty above, above the Oh, leg. my God. He just totally tore. It was so freaking funny. So you want, oh, no, Tim Dillon trashed it. Yeah, yeah. He, Did he dress yeah, up like crazy. Megan again? I love it when he dresses in drag and does female character. Oh God, it was it was brilliant though. I'm so glad that he's found his footing again now after Ben left because he was doing this whole string where he was just doing interviews and you could tell like things were off because Ben was gone and in these last three episodes it's just been him again doing his Louis rants and it's Louis been fantastic. Circles. Louis ran circles around him and you could tell Louis there because Louis on that. What happens is these comedians or people that do the podcast circuit, they'll do Tim Dillon, they'll do Lex Friedman, they'll do Joe Rogan, they'll do um, uh, your, your mother's house. And, you know, they do that whole, like like uh, Bobby Lee will just go on. I'm going to do all the different podcasts. And they're good guests and everything. But uh, to me, Tim Dillon is better doing what Steph is talking about, where he's just looking at the camera and ranting and just going stream of consciousness because he's funny as shit. His rants are amazing. When he uh, his Casey Anthony that documentary when he went off about that. <laughs> yeah, why did the people drag her stupid story corpse out of the out of the closet? I mean, obviously she killed her child and got away with it, right? She, there's so many people now that are saying that she didn't after they watched yeah, this documentary. Yeah, it was her dad. Yeah, it was her dad. Then why didn't her dad get in trouble for it? Because she was covering for him the whole time. Okay, then she should be in jail for covering it up. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. 
She's such a terrible, I don't know her. I can't say that, but I mean, and I don't want to get all Nancy Grace. She killed that child. <laughs> um, I mean, that's really what allegedly Nancy Grace on the May allegedly, but <laughs> why? I mean, they drag these people out. I, I get that Dahmer is a, a good conversation piece. Uh, and uh, he's always good for some quality television viewing and Manson even, although that might be like, Kennedy assassination level now where it's just, oh yeah, Charles Manson. But, uh, you know, you get a sexy guy like Ted Bundy and you, you show a little of this, a little of that, show that VW. But uh, I, I just don't get it. Casey Anthony, eh, keep her keep her in obscurity. That'd be like getting that Susan Smith out of jail and going, do you still miss your children? Because she's still alive. I mean, if she was dead, you know, you have a little more freedom to not have it be her in the spotlight anymore. But now she is. And does she get money for this? Like a big purse? Oh, I'm this? sure. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. She wasn't convicted of anything. So the son of Sam laws don't apply. Which... So I, I would not want to watch. I had no oh. desire to watch it at all. I didn't pay attention to the trial. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't interested. Oh, well, the, you know, I was on the regular guys back then. So it was what, 2005, six, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You guys maybe. were doing a lot of that. You were doing a lot of Terry Shavo stuff, I think. <laughs> no, I wasn't around for that. Terry Shabo. I know. Yeah, it. Kidding. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that was a strange, that was one of the strangest stories of that era, that early 2000s thing when uh, Bush, you know, flew to Florida. I, you know, I want to talk about the, just the zeitgeist that surrounded it. I yeah, mean, it was, yeah. oh my God, it was, that's all anybody talked about for a while. It's all you heard about. I'm like, who gives a shit? And my, my opinions on things have changed so much since then. Back then, I'm like, I'm Bob, unplug her, let her croak, let her die. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> and then I, and then later on, I thought, well, maybe science. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I was, I must have been when I was creepy porn czar guy. I don't know. But I was finding all, it was social media era because I was finding all the uh, pictures of Casey Anthony and bikinis and stuff that were being posted on 4chan and all that that they found on MySpace. He was like a ex escort, right? When, no. Wasn't she doing that? Well, unless that's in the new documentary, I don't know. Uh, I, th I thought she was doing that, like, after. Yeah, I don't know. Who cares, stupid dummy? Did uh, you guys watch Bullet Train? <laughs> bullet Train. I, I like I Bullet Train. Is it fun. good? Yeah. Lots of fun. Yeah? Yeah, it was very fun. Is it about a train? Yeah. Yeah, fast train? <laughs> almost almost as fast as a bullet really okay so it's about a bullet train is it what kind of movie is it is it an ensemble cast is it an action flick i don't yeah. know both yep exactly it's, a, it's action comedy what was good about it that you liked the fights were good it All reminded me of like a, a like an early like a mid-90s sort of guy richie type yeah. of thing yeah, yeah. it's like one of i those was thinking where... snatch was yeah. the closest yeah oh, as far right. as a yeah. lot of characters trying to do the same thing over top of each other yeah yeah, yeah. and they'd flash forward and then back and you know, blah 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 and i heard that those kind of movies are, are doing very very well and so directors are making more stuff like that stuff to get people in theater stuff to get people to to watch things um in making things that aren't, you know, too heavy with the message, you know? Anybody but, likes that crap. Somebody must. Like, uh, Lord of the Rings was a billion dollars, and, uh, you know, if you look at fan reviews and stuff like that, aside from the brigading, they're not very good. And then No, I, I didn't mean Lord of the Rings. I meant, like, sad stuff, like the dramas oh, and oh, yeah. bad crap. Like, nobody likes that shit. It's like you got people okay. themselves left and right nowadays just from looking at Facebook. They don't want to go to the movies and watch that shit. Elon Musk took over Twitter. I can't handle Elon Musk. He's so awful. <laughs> He's such a horrible person. I, I'm going to drive my Tesla off of a bridge into a tunnel that was bored by one of his tunnel diggers. <laughs> I'm going to set myself on fire with one of Elon Musk's flamethrowers. I hate Elon. I love all the celebrities bitching about him. They don't know anything. They're just, oh, yeah, I guess I'll go tweet about it. Uh, I'm leaving Twitter. Okay. Bye. I think he should leave stand up to, uh, to stand ups. That's for sure. <laughs> I love how Chappelle threw him under the bus. Yeah. Drag is. him up on stage. Why did he bring him up there? 
No, I, I think he asked, you know, he was one of those things where, yeah, we're friends now. Hey, I could do this. And Chappelle the whole time was going, oh, yeah, this will be good. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it's just funny to me how before he owned Twitter, everybody loved him. And now that he owns it, everybody hates him. He's mad that he's under investigation. The White House is investigating him. Like that guy could find his feet. <laughs> he has he's, to have some his fucking socks on for him. He's definitely an alien though, right? Musk, yeah, he's yeah. a transhumanist douchebag. But the fact that he owns Twitter, I mean, he, he doesn't create anything, and he just buys things. And he's sort of a, you know, a celebrity type. You know, his dad is a freak. His mother was a this and that. And he has 8,000 kids, and he was married to, what's your name, Grimes? Yeah. But uh, just the fact that he bought us, I mean, People complain that he owns this, yet they don't care that Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post and is firing 2,000 people a day from his warehouse. You know? Well, just replacing you with robots. But I'm Jeff Bezos, and I own Amazon. So. Okay. You better, be st you better be quiet, Tim. You're going to get scrubbed. Scrubbed? <laughs> from what? YouTube? I haven't gone after any of the uh, <laughs> androids that own YouTube or, or <laughs> Alphabet or whatever the fuck it's called. Who I <laughs> Who owns this platform? <laughs> we don't know, but we do not challenge them. Right. Do not challenge YouTube. Do not challenge Alphabet. Do not challenge Google. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Besides, I like YouTube. What are you going to do? Sue me. Steph, it's good to see your face. Yeah, you guys too. <laughs> it's very nice to see you. I had a really good time. I love both those guys. And um uh... And like I said, if if Big Mike ever does this Christmas show again, go see it. Oh my God, it's so great. We'll all go. Puddles, Puddles did a Christmas show too, just as Puddles. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I did not it's know that. It's just like a, a holiday theme. They're never in the no. same room together. I wonder what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome, that Eric Idol thing and all the success. All yeah. right. Keep it canon. Yeah, yeah, guys. We forgot to thank you for today. <laughs>